world, play the drum solo of life. Okay, so I have a great, great idea. So we, I am going to do this react to, uh, everybody knows this song, but you all might not know my, my impression of it. So they say the best thing about TikTok is that, or uh, the, the best thing about YouTube is that you get to do what you want to do in the way you want to do it. And uh, the reason being is that you get to put your special touch on things. So I don't know if you guys <clears throat> know this or not, but at one time I actually uh, learned the Rush catalog as much as I could. All right, so I want to I want to actually do this is a good one, and I'll be able to do maybe if this is good enough and we get enough people in here, I might do more than one. Uh, so. This is Rush's YYZ, everybody, everybody, and I mean everybody. If you haven't seen this video, go watch it. It's amazing. But what I want to analyze is the master himself because I remember being asked to start branching off into, like, Nico uh, from Iron Maiden and some of these other drummers. So this is the perfect opportunity to get into this and to be able to share my knowledge about this because uh, I really love Neil Peart. He's the master. He's the maestro. And I might be able to actually... Um, talk about some new stuff in this that you guys didn't know about. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. All right, so uh, y'all can't see it. Y'all might be able to see this on TikTok. I doubt it because I'm going to be leaning forward, so you might want to come join the, t uh, the YouTube now. All right, so obviously we're going to start with one of the most amazing guitar solos from Alex Lifeson. Let me turn this down. All right. Followed quickly into one of the greatest drum solos I myself have ever heard. All right. What I want to point out about this, I'm going to get break out my tools. <clears throat> Neil here, I love how he was able to write this to blend in with the song, first of all. You hear the swing? All right, those are awesome. Those are like master triplets. So, boom, ba dum 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 One, two, three, bump, bump, bump. That's your core notes. One, uh, 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 uh,
So this is a prime example of how to tell a story, of how to tell a story with your instrument. It's a buildup into a false ending. That was a buildup into a false ending. Neil's notoriously known for that. So is like Iron Maiden. All right, so he's given us He's giving us that bass rhythm now. So he's giving us that bass rhythm now that's gonna establish the rest of this whole thing, man. All right, so when you learn to count on drums, you actually learn that that is an eight beat measure. So it's like snare, right? So you want to follow that snare because that snare is the last hit of the measure. And he shortens it up. So if you notice there, it goes from eight measures, eight beats, to four beats real quick, and then to two beats real quick. All right? That's what I love about Neil. It's all a buildup. It's a storytelling. And then that's a two note. So, and then this right here is triplets. You know what I mean? So listen real closely. This is triplets. So it's like do 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 da 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 do 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 da 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 do 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 da 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 da. See? One two three. One two three. One two. When you learn to count, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. And I'm not saying it's not hard. I'm just saying it's not so bad to understand. I would love to see people play this. I would love it. This is the one thing I wish Yo-Yo would have done with her YYZ. I wish she would have done this. I wish she would have done this. I wish, I wish. Yo-Yo, I issue you a challenge, honey. Please, learn at least some of this drum solo. Oh, also, his left foot is keeping tempo. Back to the 4-4. Four, four. So that's, that is so hard to do because he is doing ghost notes in, in com combination with those strong single notes. You know what I mean? That's really, really hard to do. Mm. Those are strong, strong, strong flams. Neil is known to have really strong wrists. And if you've never seen his behind the shows, like before the show starts, his practice kit. Oh, those are such cool videos. And, and Neil was notoriously known for being a left-handed drummer, but playing a right-handed kit, which is hilarious. He, he mirrors himself. It, it, it opens up all of his kit. It's awesome. So you see how his snare, when he brings his hands down, the sticks are still bouncing? That's those ghost notes I was talking to you about. Super, super hard, super technical. Those are micro motions that you learn. So it's like you learn those by doing, all right, very strong single strokes, and then you let yourself do a strong single into a, into a light double. So it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like almost to the point that the recoil from the first, you know what I mean? So that's what you want. And that builds to a very strong wrist strike, you know, something. See how you see how it hits itself there? That's what you want. That's what you want. So that's the key to a very strong double. But the other part of it is you gotta accent that second note. You want that wrist motion down, okay? So this is one of the things I've been working on for the last couple of months, and I hope you all see that I'm actually getting a lot better uh, with my micro motions. Neil here is doing a lot of those. It's a lot of micro motions, and he is just keeping it going. It's awesome. Uh, it's really awesome. And needs to be pointed out. Oh, <laughs> funnily enough, this drum solo is what inspired me at first to have a double bass drum kit. I was unaware, however, my back was gonna suffer, not thinking that Neil had 300 people that fucking worked for them think, to carry all this shit, and he could play what he wants. <laughs> oh yeah. The man with the $23,000 drum kit. If you don't believe me, go look it up.
I love, love, love this. Love this solo. Those are triplets. Those are triplets. I can do those now, now that I think about it. Oh, man, going back and watching some of these videos I haven't seen in over a decade. Ah, just unlocks memories in my brain, and it just makes things make sense now. I love it. Okay, so that's another thing that I love about his set is he coordinates, he writes all of this to be musical sequences, right? I think they're actually leading this part of their show into a break. So Getty and Alex have already walked off stage by this point. And Neil here, obviously, because drummers, you know, we're just fucking jacked up on Mountain Dew! We have to play. <laughs> Ugh. I love it, I love it. Those bird, okay, so those bird chirps were always really hard to get. And one of the things that I'm thinking about now, knowing what I know about audio engineering, I never realized how amazing and how crisp Neil's kit sounds on live. Listen to those bass drums and listen to that snap on the snare. That is beautiful. Ugh, oh, so sassy. It's so sassy. That, my friends, is what compression will do for your drum kit. It'll bring your lows higher and your highs lower to make a more robust, centralized sound audio wave. It's beautiful. And to, truth be told, it's what my kit is missing at the moment, unfortunately. I want one of these fucking things so goddamn bad! I want one. Somebody buy me a xylophone. Buy me one. I want one. I can use this. Oh, man. If I was to get shit like that, I would actually eliminate the green screen and I would go back to having lights. I would go back to having, like, light, a lighted room and a light show. I actually thought about doing that, but it would mess with the green screen. You know, it would alter the light or whatever. But I want to do stuff like this for lives. Color-coordinated lights, all that. I'd have to definitely put up seizure warnings and stuff, though. You guys can help get me there. Okay, so what I love about this is this, teaches, this really teaches you about hand and foot coordination. Let me put my, uh, you know, okay, so two things. It definitely needs more cowbell. I am actually going to buy a cowbell soon, y'all. I'm going to buy one just because I, wa I want one. So this part of the drum solo taught me about hand and foot independence, and I actually used to simulate this on the toms. So it sounded something like this. I tried to mimic the notes. You know what I mean? I tried to simulate that, and that's the point. That's the point. Neil would encourage creativity. He wants you guys to think outside the box. Be your own person. And you can even do it on more than one drum. Think about it. Be creative. Have fun. You know what I mean? And this is my favorite part of all of this. All right, Neil also, for Rush, wrote all of the lyrics, helped write like the majority of the song, songs. He is a beautiful artist and an author. And if you notice this drum solo from like a 10,000 foot view, every phrase of every measure, of every segment, of every line, of every piece of every score builds onto itself. So you're going on many hills up this whole journey. Yeah, up this whole journey until Neil finally just takes you crashing down like a roller coaster ride. That's the coolest thing ever. And I just wanted to point that out as well. Neil is a master storyteller and he does it with his drums. It's beautiful.
Oh, man. So this is the part of the drum solo or the solo in general, whatever instrument, that's called taking us home. <laughs> well, Giz, you earned it, brother. Oh, man. So, okay, so this is really cool. If you watch, this, if you watch Neil's movements, he'll go... And it's like he's throwing his hands just kind of anywhere that they want to go. And, man, I spent years watching and learning and figuring this shit out to where I could also figure out exactly what he's doing. It's And it's a... You know what I mean? And it's a really cool micro-motion that it took me just years to pick up on that, man. And he's truly the master. Neil is truly, truly, truly the master. And that's why I am honored when I get to play their songs for lives, you know. All right, so another thing that I want to point out is every hit, every note, every everything in Neil's solos, all of them, even Batterista, it's all... A rehash. So what is the conclusion? What is the final chapter of a book except the summation, the culmination of the entire story? It rehashes all of the micro tidbits, all of the hero's adventures that he had to go through, all the little things. So like you see there he played the cowbell. He did like brrr, he did tom rolls because there was a part of that. He did awesome snare rolls. He did cymbal grabs. He did tom rolls again. And he did – He it's a rehashing of all – the motions, and the stuff he did throughout the whole solo. So I just wanted to point that out about Neil, is that his his solos are lessons in and of themselves. So think about that. I love these. This is what we call a sequence. Because it's also a sequence of measures, but it's also a sequence of events that are happening. It takes about 38 people to make this happen, by the way. Bum, 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 bum. Bam! Bam! Bam, bam, bam! Bam! Yep. Oh, man. He's the master. He is the master. Like I said, like I said, these are parts of it that lead them into the breaks to go, you know, that's how they do their live shows. And when you get this big, you literally have to plan your shows like that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because you're playing two, three hours, right? You're wanting to get, and you're charging $200 a ticket. So you want to make sure that all of your people, when they leave, they leave transformed. They leave having an experience, knowing your name being changed from this Awesome. Yeah, I definitely am going to start doing a live react every live. I think that that's definitely a great way to start giving back to you all, the community, by, you know, we bring people to the channel who like the react content, but we don't do that content on lives, and now we do. So maybe we can, like I said, start bringing some of these viewers to the live. So that's really cool. That's really cool, too. And it's 10 o'clock. I think I want to play a few more songs.